welcome to my channel long time no see i do apologize and i'll explain in a little while where i've been i've been really busy which is a good thing and busy crafting which is an even better thing um i have been busy stitching to be honest um now let me sorry just uh, see if i can make some more space for this all right so i'm going to be working on this little bit here i don't know how long this is going to go for hobbies in the kitchen starting dinner and sophie may or may not excuse the noise I'm just keeping an eye on my levels. I may end up taking that out. Um, yeah, hubby's in making dinner, so he's grinding the veg that goes in our gravy. Um, all right, if you are not already a subscriber, please subscribe. Please click the bell for notifications when I do upload a video. I know they have been a little bit sparse video-wise in the last, ooh, probably three weeks or so to a month. Um, I've just been really tired I am um, and I haven't got around to editing what I have got and then uploading it and all that kind of jazz and I will go into some of those details as we go um so yes please click subscribe if you would like to support my channel there is a membership which is just a regular payment um, monthly donation that you can do um, there is also the coffee which is down here um, the links are all in the description if you would like to support me by buying me a coffee uh, and I do have patreon which is also linked down in my description um, there are two levels in my patreon there's the thanks for coming kind of thing and then there's the um, vlogs that you would get behind the scenes stuff and that's for the cost of a coffee once a week so five bucks a week or whatever it works out at. Um, so yeah, if you would like to support my channel doing that, that would be fantastic. And you can help pay for my um, crazy crafting. Um, and just support me and say hey. Um, okay. So where have I been? Um, I did get a lovely email from somebody saying, hey, we haven't seen you for a bit. Is everything okay? And I said, yeah, everything is okay. Um, I've just been madly stitching and thank you, thank you so much. So you know who you are and I do really appreciate you touching base with me and probably passing on to other people if they had been asking where I was and why I seem to be off the internet. Um, I wasn't quite off the internet, um, but I was... Um, not doing my own videos so if you haven't already been made aware that I am a VIP for the Black Needle Society well I am and as a result of being a subscriber to the Black Needle Society let alone anything else um, we've had two retreats back to back one was called Frog Warts, and if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen stitching updates from that. So we had Frog Warts Year 2. That was run from, well, let's say Wednesday US time, Wednesday evening US to Sunday afternoon evening US. Okay, um, for me it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday morning. Now, part of that retreat, because of the um, time difference, meant I was getting up with an alarm at 5.30 in the morning. And at six o'clock in the morning, my first challenge would commence. This is probably the third challenge in the day at Frogwarts, because they had been up all US morning, starting at about eight or nine in the morning. So we would have one hour challenges, timed challenges for maximum stitches. So I was ignoring any messages I was getting during these hours and letting them 
roll over because you didn't even have time to pick up the phone. I didn't even have time to enter stitches into Pattern Keeper. Um, you know, that's how determined I was to get maximum stitches in in an hour. And you know what? I actually probably broke the same amount of stitches in one hour as I did in two hours the following week. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The, the um, pressure you can put yourself under and colour blocking and being strategic was incredible. It was so much fun. And you may have watched my unboxing videos and you could see how much fun I was having. Um, so I'm sorry, I know I'm diamond painting, but I'm probably gonna be talking all kinds of stitchy stuff because I have been busy, busy stitching. I kind of lost my diamond painting bug because I've been busy stitching. And I'll kind of explain a little bit how, why, where. Um, so, um, where are we? We're probably three, maybe four weeks. Okay, so maybe a four weeks ago, Marcus was due to get the COVID vaccine. Um, he was due to get the AstraZeneca. And then he got phoned up the night before, um, sorry, the night before the states changed their rules, the government changed the rules and said, all you old farts now over the age of 50, you can't have AstraZeneca anymore because it's too much of a stroke risk. Um, now you have to have the Pfizer. So he got bumped off that list. And because the GPs don't keep Pfizer, he has to go to our local hospital where they do it. Um, and get the Pfizer vaccine. So he got bumped off the day before and he couldn't get another appointment for another four weeks or something ridiculous. I think he, his appointment is this week and we're hoping something doesn't go tits up that stops that either. Anyway, the Australia has just gone crazy and I might go into those details later, later. But anyway, so he got man flu which is nothing to do with COVID, but of course he got COVID tested and he was okay. He was still able to just about drive me into work and um, look after Sophie for me. So I didn't have to take time off work. So he's home convalescing, dosing himself with everything he can. So he's taking the pseudoephedrine, he's taking the, um, he's taking the vitamin C, he is um, resting as much as possible. He doesn't rest and feeling guilty for it. Um, when I was home, he would sleep. Um, he was just coming out of it when my retreat started. Uh, sorry, I'm pausing. I thought I could hear rain. It's been raining on an awful day and it's freezing cold. It's two degrees when I went out to feed the dogs later um, today, dog and cat or anyway, pets. So, um, yeah, so he, yeah, he's been under the weather with the man flu. Well, as a result of me um, burning the candle at both ends, not quite, um, with the frog warts retreat and doing so much talking and things like that and just having fun in general, my throat got really, really sore and I ended up taking two days off work while I got COVID tested. Now, we don't have COVID in Tasmania. Some people are still not getting the testing done when they should be, but either way, I got COVID tested, you know, and was fine, but missed those two days doing that, but then went straight into the next, routine, next um, retreat. So I'm sitting under my new purchase of a heated blanket oh my god it's so good but it's a weighted heated blanket so um it's even more blissful it was awesome um so i'm sitting under the heated blanket i'm stitching i think one day i think i walked 500 steps yeah i was like back to back stitching um it was crazy and it's funny because one of the girls that was talking to me today, she was saying that she gets in 15,000 steps a day and I'm kind of thinking, oh my God, like that's probably walking an hour, an hour and a half, just walking. That's really good. I wish I could get up there. 
So um, I wasn't even really monitoring my 90 day step challenge people. Um, I just basically switched off most social media um, for these challenges. I neglected my poor friend up in Queensland who messages me every day and she was so kind of, you know, I don't want to bother you. And it's kind of like, listen, you are not a bother. If I'm busy, I just won't message you back. Um, you know, um, no, no, it's going to fall from up there, Sophie. It just needs to rest on the cushion. So, um, yeah, was doing the frog warts challenge. And in the frog warts challenge, there were also stash dives. Um, there were digital dives where I was able to go on the computer. But pretty much anything else was maybe chatting in Facebook rooms and... Um, just shooting the breeze, trying to deal with Sophie being a three-year-old, you know, wanting to play. And when was, you know, competition time versus when was, listen, I really need you to be quiet right now versus the whole, okay, I'm just stitching in my own time now. Um, and, you know, she coped pretty well with that. But yeah, by the end of it, early mornings, not really late nights, because I think I started going to bed at about, 10, 9, 10, started getting ready for bed at 9, maybe into bed by 10. Normally I start getting ready for bed about 10 and get into bed by kind of half 10, 11. So I was trying to do, you know, the right thing with that. Um, my back, okay, let's call it a back. <laughs> yes, I have one. Um, <laughs> um, my back is not my back anymore. My back is now my hips, um, particularly my pelvis. And I think, without being too kind of Dr. Google-ish, it's more menopausal, perimenopausal symptoms than my back is knackered. I've been doing my physio, which is working. I have been... Um, walking when I can. I've been sitting under the heated rug. The heated rug really makes a difference for tendonitis. Um, and the doctor is really happy that I'm starting to spot this. I've actually started sleeping at night with the electric blanket on super, super low, just to give me that little bit more heat during the night, um, rather than a cold bed. And I'm so, so grateful to have that electric blanket. Um, which was gifted to me and you know who you are and oh my god you have revolutionized my movement let's say um, particularly post-surgical it was just so nice and I thoroughly enjoyed it when I was sitting in bed sitting on bed even stitching this morning so that sto whoa, 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 whoa. no please stop you're hitting the keyboard okay okay go so yeah, really thankful that I had it this morning, just when I was sitting and stitching, um, just freeing up the TV for Marcus and Sophie, because I actually didn't know how long the um, stitchy thing would happen for this morning. And I looked at the time and it was like 2.30. I'd been stitching since nine. And it was like, oh my God, I'm having so much fun. I was doing the Twisted Rainbow Sampler. A twisted, yeah, Twisted Rainbow um, band sampler and the first bit of it was the butterfly or the moth or whatever it is in the top corner and the next one and that was just cross stitch the next band starts the specialty stitches and I'm sitting there looking at the specialty stitches and looking how am I going to work this out and I went I this isn't computing how does this go at the top it doesn't compute Anyway, I started at the bottom and worked my way up the line and got into the swing of things and then had to frog back a bit. It was a beautiful stitch doing the rice stitch. These specialty stitches are so brand new to me. It was just crazy. Then the next one is the diamond eyelet. Now I'm using a linen. Oh, it's dark. And I'm in the bedroom, which doesn't have my big light on but I'm still loving it. I ended up with Sophie getting my round the neck horseshoe kind of light and that helped. And then taking my glasses off 
helped even more because I wasn't going cross-eyed looking underneath, but my eyes were sore by the end of it. But I'm loving it. And it works up so fast because it's simple, it's methodical. You're kind of going around the clock with the little diamond thing. Um, it was just, it's such a pleasure to work on. And other people have said, I am loving the Twister Rainbow Samplers. Um, so really, really loving that. Um, if you want to see that, you're just going to have to watch my floss tubes. Um, it's pretty specialty. You can actually get the cross stitch version. Um, it's, to be honest, it's the poor cousin of the specialty stitch. Um, I think if you can get the specialty stitch, do it on linen or even weave and take your time. So what I've ended up doing, because when I initially went to do the rice stitch, I went on to Instagram to have a look at other people's doing stitches and I couldn't see any so I've ended up taking close-ups of my stitching. Now my stitching's not fantastic, it's not model stitching or anything, but it's at least a close-up so that if other people go to do it and they go, oh my god, what is this supposed to look like? My example is there now under the Instagram hashtag. Um, but yeah, absolutely loving this project and you know, I've had the floss from Jesse for over a year because I think I think it was Rachel who put me onto it way, way back when she first started talking about it. And she didn't do anything with it for ages. And then she did she started it, made a mistake with the top of the moth wing, somehow miscounted something. And then life got in the way. And then she got back into it. And there is now more and more of us actually doing this project. I'm just looking for fours to see if I've got them all. I think I have them all. Um, so she's also um, doing it. And I don't know who else is doing it. I don't know if Heike's doing it. Um, I think Heike's doing something else. She was doing something that was pretty cool, actually. Um, I love watching Heike's work. Um, she's such a, such a neat stitcher, but she's fast too. I think Rachel actually said she's a monogamous stitcher. And that's why she seems to get through it so fast. Um, I am going to go with the H, because the H is even less. All right, now I think these are sticky because these are the ones I fluffed back in the hair. So hopefully they won't be too bad. Well, we'll see how we go. They're sticky because there's residue on them. They're not stuck together as such. Um, so on the back of Frog Wars finishing for me on Monday morning with the closing ceremony and there was house points. I ended up playing Quidditch. Oh my goodness, it was so much fun. It was intense. So we were doing digital dives where you've got to kind of look for things like you know scissor fobs with mushrooms on them okay and then but quidditch we had to descramble a thing you're doing it as a team of six you're descrambling words then you're having to find them as a team and after 15 minutes of going through your list they release a snitch now the snitch in some cases is just a hard to find pattern in one case, it was a pattern that was designed by 10 designers. I have no clue. Some of these people who've been stitching for years probably go, oh, that's a Blackbird design or a Barbara Anna or whatever it is. And I'm kind of going, I have no clue where to even start. So I'm not even going to try looking for the snitch. Um, there was another one that when I was playing got one and it was a blackbird design with the same name on three patterns and again I haven't looked at blackbird designs yeah your friends oh it's your song again she loves this song um we are Australian um that's on ABC and it's showing a whole load of kids with multiple nationalities and stuff some of them have got headphones plugged in. It's one of those online collaboration kind of videos. She loves it. Um, it's, it kind of hits all the feels. And with the Olympics going on as well, it's all kinds of like patriotic um, for the Aussies. She'll probably start singing it next. Dear. Um, so 
Yeah, it was so much fun. It, and it was hectic. It was like, as soon as you find the snitch, I think the game is over. So you have 15 minutes to get maximum points and then get the snitch. And once the snitch is got, that's it. Game over, you gotta stop. Please don't. No, something weird is happening on my computer. It keeps on coming up saying iPad. I don't know if my iPad is connecting to it or not. Anyway, um, please stop. Listen and do as you're told, Sophie. So, um, the first retreat ended. Now this is my very first digital retreat with the Black Needle Society. I think they had done one earlier in the year and because of the whole delayed gratification and everything else with the Black Needle Society, like you pay for a box in, for instance, well, I've paid for a box in June that I'm not going to get until December. Um, the nice box. So I'm paying at the middle of the year. Well, I'm granted I'm paying in the middle of the year for a lot of boxes that I'm not going to be getting until Christmas. Um, including Fort... not Fortnite. Um, Forbidden Fibre. I'm getting the third year in Harry Potter for my scarf. Hey. Um, so... It is raining. Um, and it's, it's lashing rain probably snow on the mountain it was yeah I've already told you it was two degrees it's like what the heck um, and you guys are sweltering your bras off in the States um, so yeah it was straight into the next retreat then the following Wednesday night US Thursday for me and again I had taken time off work um, now with frog warts, I didn't understand how intense it would be and I hadn't planned to take the time off that I needed. So I did for the second one and not that it was a disappointment, it absolutely wasn't a disappointment, but it was so much more relaxed and less intense than frog warts, but I really didn't take the time off around frog warts that I really should have done. So the next retreat started and it was called Night Garden. Now in this box, we actually got everything we needed. Put it on the pillow. No, leave it plugged in and let it keep charging while you're watching. Um, so the box came with fabric that we chose. Oh no, not. I think we chose whether it was going to be Ada or linen or even weave or something. And that was about all the choice that we had um, because the count was set by Katie as the designer and it was gorgeous. Now I have actually finished that. You can see it in my floss tube or you can see it on my Instagram. But this thing came with a project bag, it came with the fabric, it came with the floss, although I ended up running out of floss for the green vine that went around it. Actually, if I think about it, I'll put it in post editing and um, you can see it but it so I didn't have the floss for the second half of the green because I was doing two two strands over 18 count and I shouldn't have been I should have been doing just one count or one strand but I actually like the full coverage of the one strand like really really like the coverage of two strands on 18 count um it gives it quite a dense coverage and I just like it um, now it doesn't mean I will always do it like that. I am only using one strand of the silk on the rainbow um, sampler um, But that's okay So um, What else did it come with? It came with this gorgeous scarf and again all of these things you all have seen now on my Instagram as well If you want to go check that out um, So it came with a gorgeous scarf came with a needle minder came with um, what else did it come with? It came with um, the pattern. Also got an electronic version, which is handy because then I was able to use it with Pattern Keeper and it worked. Um, the 
the Facebook group, the digital retreat, all that's included. So we had rooms that we could go into and we could just chat while we stitched. The stitching challenges on this one were two hours in duration. And um, we got a chance to chat, whereas in frog warts, we, everybody just got quiet. We were just like intently stitching. And I wasn't so strategic in, in Night Garden in doing color blocking because the whole part of it was penalty stitches would get you 50 stitches for one point, whereas is stitching on either the retreat piece or a piece that was designated so it might have been a worm on one challenge or a snail on another challenge I couldn't find a piece that actually had all of those well it turns out pandemic actually does have all of the elements in it but I didn't have pandemic at the time I have been gifted pandemic since then um, and it's like oh my goodness so um, I think I have the piece of fabric for pandemic or do I no maybe not Anyway, um, oh, and just before frog warts, I ended up at the last minute that week um, hand dyeing um, the fabric that I was going to use for all seven years of frog warts. So I called it butter beer. It's actually tea dyed, tea and coffee dyed. Um, so I think I'd started that on the Tuesday night and um, continued to um, prepare for all of that. Um, so yeah, the sessions with um, the Night Garden Retreat ended up with bingo, stash dives and digital dives in between the stitching sessions. So what would happen was I would set an alarm for 5.30, I was usually awake before that even, um, but I was getting up, I was getting a cup of tea, I was sitting down to do my stitch challenge and then it was into a virtual challenge or stash dive and then it was into another challenge and then there was one more stitching challenge and then that was it for the US night and I got to do my own thing for the day which was still more stitching um, and yeah got a fair bit done of night gardens pattern and finished it during the end of the week um so it's now sunday so i've literally like done this whole thing from friday i think friday through to monday through to sunday and finished this seven thousand stitches or whatever it was it was pretty intense but it was a gorgeous pattern so you've got these vines and you've got the rosebuds and then you've got leaves and you've got stars and moons and then you've got the moth down the bottom the moonrise moth no moonrise snail midnight moth midnight moth and then um i ended up changing the spelling for the word saver and it was only i mean i was looking at the word saver in the us you spell it without the u it's a normal spelling difference between English spelling and US spelling where you drop off the U in any O-U-R or O-R endings. So I think I'd looked at it and I kind of went, yeah, that's not right, but hadn't actually thought of changing the pattern until one of the other girls in the Facebook groups or rooms was saying that she was going to change it. And I went, oh yeah. And I worked out how to do it, worked it out on the pattern that if I moved the capital S across I think I ended up moving it across two stitches and then all the other letters shuffled left two stitches and then the U got fitted in and then the R got booted over and that would have moved it all in total by five stitches and it would still fit so it worked all of this out and now we didn't have a U in the pattern but I ended up copying the N and flipping it upside down as a concept and it worked so I have a um, correct for me spelling of saver and it says it says saver life and all its magic um, and the plan we even got a finishing kit with the 
box. So the finishing kit can make a little bag, but I've actually got, um, there's a store in the city, um, Spotlight actually, it's a craft store. They actually give you, um, if you need a bag, you, you buy it for, I actually don't recall how much it, it was. Maybe it's a dollar, maybe it's less, but it's a calico bag. It's plain and has no flourish on it whatsoever. And what I'm going to do is get my Saver Life piece and finish it off on the backing when I can see my dining room table again, or my kitchen table, even dining table. But anyway, when I can get my sewing machine out, I will stitch it onto the finishing stuff and finish it properly. I think I also have to get some purple thread, but that's neither here nor there. Um, when I've got that done, I will then stitch it onto my calico bag and use it as a project bag. And that's something that I will always be able to use to kind of go to my stitching day with my local girls, you know, where I'm physically going to somewhere with some crop stitching that I don't need my knitting or anything else. And it's kind of like, I'm grabbing a nice pretty bag that fits over my shoulder. And this is my cross stitching kit, ready to go for the day, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's the plan with that one. And when I finish it, I will show it on my floss tube whenever I do get around to finishing it. There is a second bonus pattern in our night garden retreat. And that is the midnight, no, that is the moonrise snail. Apparently there's a running joke with the girls about snails. Um, and we ended up doing a search and I was on my phone doing this, going to my stitching group and we were having to look for patterns with snails and the girls are still saying, I think Thrace is still saying, her Etsy search still comes up with snails as a suggested pattern. You know, this is how, oh, for heaven's sake, she's got, obsession with taking the thing off charge it's not getting its charge properly and then she's wondering why she can't watch it it's just not giving it long enough um anyway so um yeah so i've been doing that then um i had booked monday and tuesday to be days off work and I ended up getting called into work on Tuesday. So I lost a day off. The day off was actually meant to be for me to just chill because I've been getting up, you know, crack it on. This, they didn't need know any of this. And I said, yeah, yeah, whatever. There's nothing I can do to change it. So ended up going in, getting ready for, you know, my next day's work and whatever. And it was fine and um, and that's I've been busy working um, a couple of no maybe a month ago um, now I think yeah it's been a month because I've got the appointment to see my specialist again um, it's been a month since I've had an iron transfusion my GP actually said that I should be feeling better after a week and kind of a week after having the iron transfusion I was into the retreats and not sleeping so he kind of thought yeah it's okay you know go and enjoy yourself um he has also given me medication for the restless legs and I think that's also helped me to start getting my sleep stabilizing um because I have been doctor googling that's a brilliant term doctor googling um because I have been doctor googling my Facebook searches keep coming up with menopause things saying, you know, if you have pain in your hips and your knees, it's perimenopause. And as a result, I have ended up starting curcumin, turmeric, basically. I think you can get turmeric lattes in some shops. Um, Stitcherista may have mentioned turmeric lattes a long, long time ago for something like Starbucks. We don't have a Starbucks in Tassie anymore. They actually shut down a whole heap of Starbucks cafes a couple of years ago because nobody was buying coffee from Starbucks by comparison, um, because we've got better coffee shops in Tasmania for a start. 
Um, so turmeric has been, or cur curcumin, um, has been taken now. I take it morning and evening, and I also take a sleep sleep um, naturopath kind of thing and that might be helping as well so these are all you know peri kind of things um, to help with the broken sleep and everything else and because I don't have crazy stitching to have to get up for I'm able to kind of go nope going back to sleep whatever and I'm kind of sleeping through um, which is really good. Um, so, yeah, my physio has been going well. I've been doing those exercises too, which means that the pain has been lessening on the hips. The heat has been making a difference too, even though we are in the midst of winter here in Tasmania. Um, in fact, winter is only just starting now. Um, we're still a week off August, but from now until give or take the mid 20s um, of August, we're gonna get snow. Um, it's happened for me for the last 21 years being in Tasmania. Like when I flew in on the 19th of August, 21 years ago, um, there was snow on the mountain. So it's my marker to kind of go, there's still snow up until, you know, August, September. And it's usually worse in the end of July, August, than any other winter month, you know, technically. It's just like Ireland. I used to get um, winter weather really until January. And when it was winter weather in January, it was blazing blue skies, icy cold. But bl blue skies that, you know, clear as anything wall-to-wall -wall blue skies it was just incredible but it was in the middle of winter that you were getting them um now right now i think um everybody in ireland seems to be dying because it's low 20s and we're just not used to it in ireland even like a 23 degree day is just like kill me now um and that's the same latitude as new york i think but we get the southern, we get the Gulf Stream coming up and hitting actually right where Rachel lives. Um, so it keeps it quite mild. And that's why we have mild winters in Ireland. Like the last snowfall I ever remember was back in the 80s when I was a kid. Um, and I think it was a severe year all around the world. Um, I think the girls were even talking about it this morning in the stitching thing. Um, that it was back in the 80s that they had the really bad snow and that was maybe Florida or something where she was from. Um, See, so yeah, I woke up this morning and saw the Black Needle Society's post on Instagram saying that they were doing a chat and <coughs> excuse me, jumped on there with them. <coughs> excuse me. Frog. This is one of the mugs from the Frog Awards Retreat. This is actually year one's mug that I ordered. Um, and I think I put a video on Instagram showing it moving in slow motion. It's awesome. And it's a good big size. But I I could get a cozy on it, but that would take away from the picture. Um, but it doesn't keep my coffee or tea, sorry, warm. That's the other thing. I've stopped drinking coffee and ended up with a belter of a headache because caffeine withdrawal. I only had like one coffee a day, but it was enough to make, clearly make a difference. Actually, it was two because I'd bring in a flask as well. Um, but I got a belter of a caffeine withdrawal headache and I'm thinking, I feel like crap. Um, it was only when I was talking to somebody else going, oh, <laughs> yeah, that would explain the headache. Um, so I've been feeling nauseous whenever I drink coffee. So then I was having hot chocolate and then I went off the hot chocolate and started just having a tea. And I've worked out my timing. So if I make my tea in one of those mugs that in 15 minutes I can start drinking it in the morning and 
not feel like I'm choking down, you know, a cup of coffee, which is how I was leaving the house in the morning. So it was like, you know, chug, chug, jump in the car, go to work kind of thing. Um, so yes, it's not any more civilized or anything either. Um, yeah, so I've just been flat out. Um, and stitching and loving the stitching. So doing the Saver Life stitching each evening to finish it. Feeling really guilty actually, which is stupid. Feeling guilty that I could only get maybe three or four hundred stitches in at the end of my work day. Um, and kind of going, oh, but I want to keep going. I want to finish, you know, this colour. And it's like, mm -mm, no, you've got whatever. 200 stitches left in this color it's gonna mean another hour and it's already pushing 9 30 10 no and just having to talk myself through kind of you know it'll still be there tomorrow and you'll still be able to stitch it and you'll you know it'll just balance out and of course next month is um august and it's the last month for Dark Queen of the Sea. Um, so our beading is going to happen and our back stitching is going to happen. Um, Aaron is um, has said that um, the back stitching really makes his pieces. Um, and the beading, she's got beads around her neck and... I'm actually not sure where else she has got beads, but you can see there's gaps in her neck. So she's got a, I can't even remember. Like we got the bead kit if if we chose to. We got the bead kit from Leslie way back. Like this is a year long project now. Um, we got the bead kit and I can't remember what color the beads are. I haven't looked at them, but I have now got um, in the frog warts box we got a little bead needle minder and you put a little sticky pad into the needle minder and you can throw some beads in it sticks to the sticky pad um, I also have a stitch a bead kind of thimble and it's got like velcro hairs on it that you put on your finger and you can catch the beads in that as well I've got a bazillion trays that I can put them into um, thanks to diamond painting. So that's not going to be an issue either. Um, so I might even, while I'm thinking of it, dig out my old, old kits that you could get from AliExpress. You know, the really cheap and nasty ones that have the little round dishes, kind of the size of the macaron. Um, it's kind of like that size, but it's a little white dish and it's got these beveled sides. Um, I could even use one of those for the beads. Although I'd be terrified of this thing going ping and beads going flying. Um, which is why I've probably never worked with beads before in my life. Um, yeah. I also have my local people's stitching retreat, like a weekend away, happening in October. So that will be all kinds of fun. Um, lots and lots of stitchy things to look forward to. I have so much stuff I need to record videos for. It's ridiculous. Like the mounds are getting super, super ridiculous. I actually went through my magazines and I think I've got three months of two different companies' magazines to go through. Um, so I'm going to do a joint video for those and put markers in so that people can go, oh, I want to look at this issue and they can just jump to that issue. Um, rather than making them separate videos because you know you'd never get them released otherwise um or i could release them all in day i don't know but i think i'll do them separately um here i've got knit crate have i got knit crate no i don't have a knit crate um i have a darn good yarn i have my last darn good yarn i think i haven't cancelled my subscription yet but I have got my last Darn Good Yarn box when they've changed things. They've actually stopped doing, oops. They've stopped doing the Darn Good Yarn boxes. I don't know where that went. The way 
I used to get them. So let me show you a prop if you're into yarn. This is a darn good yarn box, right? And what you used to get is not what's in here now. You used to get one and then you used to get a key ring or a bag or, you know, something else. A free gift, basically. Well, they've changed it now to this. And I don't know if I've blocked off addresses. I think I have. Now you get this. Okay? So you've got a sticker there. Num nuts in the post office has gone and put a bloody label on my pretty side. Of course, there was nowhere else to really put it. But anyway, well, they could have put it down here. I don't know. Anyway, they I don't know if it, it would even peel off easily. So they've got this brown box. That's not quite so pretty. And I think in this is either... It feels like three. It's pretty solid in there. And I think this is Nicole's like two year anniversary kind of gift. So this is a special box. Whereas normally you want to get two balls like that box that I just showed you. So, um, yeah, I'm not into that. Um, I mean, I love the initiative of supporting the artisans and all that kind of thing. If, if you've watched an, a darn good yarn unboxing, you will know that I want to support the artisans, but I also want to feel like I'm, you know, kind of getting treats and things, sort of, in a way as well. So, yeah, I've put a hold on my subscription for August and September. I don't know if I'll start it up again. It's still cheap. We're grandfathered into the new box, but they're not always yarns that you can do an awful lot with being thick silk, worsted weights um, and because they're so small you can't necessarily use them in one big project so um, there is a plan for me to move my craft area into the spare room and um, that will mean that I get to put my wool out on display so then it's going to be a case of oh well, what actually have got, I got that can go together and the colors will you know blend so that might make me actually have more projects than I realized to um to use them with so we'll see how that goes um yeah at the moment we're everything is on hold on that um because we need to do some cleaning in the room and some painting and clearing and that kind of thing. Sophie's fallen asleep on the couch. She probably... She probably will do that once a fortnight now. Otherwise she sleeps in the car when she comes in to get me, to get me at the end of the day. Um, she doesn't have a sleep any other time. So her having a sleep now is like... Oh. It's a rest for both of us, Mar although Marcus is busy because he's staying out of the way because I'm recording. But um, yeah, let me grab this corner and have a chat with you. So um, yeah, Darn Good Yarn is petering out. I've got thread clubs. I think I've got two months of thread clubs to show. I've got fabric from Misty. I've got even more fabric from Misty coming. Oh my god, you should wait until you see it. It's like Phoenix and Fire Dragon, I think they're called. Oh, so yummy. Um, I've got Disney magazines um, to show you. Um, just, I've got stuff that I need to put away. I've got the Bridgerton box to show you from Forbidden Fiber. And... I did a six minute video in the middle of one of the stash dives for the pirates box and I've got that to show you too. Um, but they're all going to kind of get amalgamated into a floss tube or something. So much to record and show and everything else and yeah as I say I've been exhausted by the end of the day. I haven't wanted to not stitch and jump on the computer and do editing so I've just stitched 
and spent time with Marcus and Sophie and just kick back and watch really stupid TV. Um, and yeah, just just zoned out from nine o'clock in the evening, really. Um, yeah, but I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, I'm busy stitching and there's not a day goes past really, there's not a working day that goes past when I'm not um, knitting at least on my way into work. I don't always knit on my way home from work. It depends on what time I get finished. Um, as to whether or not I will knit on the way home because I'm losing daylight for a start. Um, I had two weeks where I had some overtime. Um, but my knitting is coming on. I've actually, I'm getting into the swing of the lace. I don't think it's a lace piece. Um, but it's, it's a chart piece. And let me try and explain this to you without confuzzling the situation. But on one row, you're slipping three stitches. That's okay. So you knit three or, yeah, knit three, slip three. The next one then, you're... Um, knit two slip one n slip slip knit so it's knit two slip one stitch sorry knit two stitch one slip one knit two so you're gathering those three it back into the one um then the next one you're just slipping one and then the next one it's knit knit into one stitch then yarn over then knit back into that stitch again the knit yarn over and knit is a really slow step um and by that what i mean is i only get one row done on my way into work it's a 15 minute drive in and i'm literally knitting that row from the moment i leave home to the getting to my front door at work the other ones i can sometimes get two rows in depending on which two rows are together I can sometimes get two rows in getting into work. So it's slow as hell going this section, but it's working this section. Whereas I think when I did it, the other side of the scarf, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And there's a couple of screw ups for want of a better term. I am not frogging it back <laughs> again. I have frogged this scarf. I don't know how many times. Yeah. Um, it's crazy, but I'm really enjoying it, but I will be glad when I finish this block that's just slow going. And then I'll race through the end and be finished that, hopefully by the end of the year, for the next year three project to start for my in-car project. Um, I do... I did have something that I wanted to do, and news recently has put a kibosh on that. Um, but I'll just wait and see what happens in the next week on that news as to whether or not I pick up that project again in a hurry. Um, yeah. I am, um, but yeah, still stitching. I've just spotted that I need a mic. Where's the mic? There's the mic. One of the drills came off over here. Come on. Oh, not two. No, I did get two and it fell off. All right. So yeah. Um, what am I doing? I've got first aid training tomorrow. Um, all day. That should be fun. Um, I had to do a pre-course thing. <laughs> this at work and finish it today because it's long it's almost as long as the actual training um then a short week of work um then what have i got the weekend off And then I'm working later shifts for a week. And then 
that weekend? No, that weekend is my stitching people. My weekends are blurring now. The retreat's in the middle of the month, around about the 15th. And there was something else that was interfering with it that I was going to go do. I have to look on the calendar. That's I, I have to rely on a calendar because my memory is not there. I've got appointments four days out of this week. Four? Three. I've got physio. No, I've got my specialist. I've got my physio. No, I don't. I have my specialist. I've got my nails. And then we've got a counselling session. And then I think the following week might be physio. Doctors and physio and... Crazy. It's pitch black out now. It's quarter to six. Yummy winter. Um, yes. All right. I'm going to let you go. We are winning with this girl's hair. Um, yes, we are winning. All right. Take care of yourselves, please. Um, please stay safe with health wise and everything else I know lockdowns are crazy on the mainland um, my son had a bit of a health scare with his wife and was told he wasn't allowed into the hospital with her because of COVID um, but thankfully she was home by the end of the afternoon so it's all good um, yeah it's just it's just mental we've lost two young people young people in their 40s because of the AstraZeneca thing to blood clots um, although there was somebody else saying that we lose people to blood clots all the time from something else um, but we don't hear about those kind of things you know we're hearing about everything is COVID related at the moment as you guys are probably familiar with anyway um, everything is COVID related so um, we forget about the normal complications that people have from having vaccines in general and stuff so yeah um yeah so just look after each other keep in touch with people and oh the dpathon is happening next weekend oh that was something yeah work is interfering with me being able to do the dpathon um so we're a dpathon is happening on the weekend of the 7th and the 8th um so it's pretty much all day dp -athon. Um The schedules will be going out and you will, if you save the playlist, you'll just go from one into the next into the next. Um, and it's a lot of fun if you want to just catch up with friends in the live or just listen. Um, the dp -athons tend to be a little bit more fun and silly than maybe a whip and chat might be because people might play games, people might have trivia, people are also going to be sharing about whatever charity that they're supporting, so there is some fundraising involved there. Um, I think a few of the girls are actually supporting um, Marissa's charity, which is the St. Jude Foundation, which is a children's foundation for health over in the States. Um, but there are other charities as well. So, you know, Get behind them, support them, even if you can't do all of the hour-long live, but you can jump in and just kind of say, hey, it's me, I'm here, hello. Um, and then, you know, get out and leave again. Do whatever you need to do. But there are, will be people constantly available on this weekend. Um, I think even into the small hours of the morning, some people are actually saying that they'll take the middle of the morning slot. So if you can't sleep, there's going to be something for you too. So, um, yeah, there's that. So... Lots and lots happening, and August, I think, kicks off another DP event. Um, I think that Mindy is organising. Mindy is really the DP event person this year. And I don't think it's August that the Great Lakes retreat is happening. I think it's later in the year. I could be wrong on that one. Um, but there's retreats kind of gearing up as well from that point of view too so you're going to hear people talking about them more and more um so yeah i'll talk to you soon look after yourselves and bye for now may the road rise up to meet you 
May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. <laughs>